Welcome, brothers and sisters, to Mormon Movie Reviews, where LDS movie lovers belong. I'm your host, Eve Ace. Today is January 2nd, 2023. This is episode 75, where we will review Private and Prejudice, a Latter-day comedy released in 2003. This has a running time of 104 minutes. It's unrated, and it's a romantic comedy. This review works best if you've seen this film before, though that is not required. And here's your spoiler alert. Your synopsis. This film is a modern adaptation of Jane Austen's 1813 novel, Pride and Prejudice, set in Provo, Utah. Now, here we see Elizabeth Bennett, played by Cam Heskin. She dreams of becoming an author, and she bucks the Mormon cultural and societal pressures to be married. Elizabeth tries to escape the advances of several bachelors, including handsome but haughty businessman Will Darcy. Elizabeth Bennett is a 26-year-old college student living in the early 2000s. She lives with four roommates. On the left, we see Jane Sola. And here next, we meet Lydia, played by Kelly Stables, and also her uh, pugnacious pug, pet dog. Lydia's younger sister is Kitty, played by Amber Hamilton. Uh, Kitty does everything that her older sister does, by the way. And we round out the five some with the socially awkward Mary, played by Rainey Kerwin. Now, despite the social pressures to be married, Elizabeth is not interested in dating men until after she graduates and rather focuses her attention on becoming a writer. While working her shift at the bookstore, she meets pompous Englishman Will Darcy, played by Orlando Seal, who criticizes our protagonist. How rude. Okay, I'm looking for a volume of writing by Kierkegaard. K-I-E. Right, the father of existentialism. You're in landscape gardening. Really? Oh, I had no idea that Mark Twain's genius extended to gardening. In typical romantic comedy style, these two take most of the movie to warm up to one another. After work, Jane convinces Elizabeth to attend a party with her roommates thrown by the wealthy Charles Bingley, here played by Ben Gourley. Jane is smitten by Charles, and they star in a hot dance number. While avoiding an unwanted admirer, Elizabeth, she runs into her romantic interest, Jack, who casually proposes marriage to her over a game of pool. Elizabeth rejects him because she wants to focus on graduating and becoming a writer. Meanwhile, Charles' sister, uh, Caroline, she is pursuing Darcy without success. And Jack and Darcy, they eventually bail on the party altogether. The next day, Jane and Elizabeth, they run into Darcy and Charles playing tennis who invite them to join in. Caroline flirts with Darcy, but Darcy says that he is interested in Elizabeth. What a shock. Charles tries to set Elizabeth up for a tennis lesson, but Darcy but she politely refuses and leaves. Back at home, Jane shows Elizabeth a letter from a publisher who wants to meet with her. How exciting. Moments later, Collins, played by Hubble Palmer, proposes marriage to Elizabeth despite her clear uninterest and blatant disapproval. Don't interrupt, okay? Now, even though there are many disadvantages to choosing you, I've thought it through and I'm willing to overlook the things about you that I hate, the overbite, among others. And, uh, Please, no. Get a clue, Collins. Later, Jack takes Elizabeth on a date where the university co-ed steers the conversations away from marriage. Jack reveals that in the past, Darcy bribed him to stop dating his sister, Anna. Things take a turn when Elizabeth rejects Jack's unsolicited kiss, which ends their date early. Whoa. Slow down, cowboy. Darcy returns to visit Elizabeth at the bookstore and calls her strangely attractive and invites her to dinner. Elizabeth turns him down, too, offended by the rude manner in which he tried to compliment her. I think you'd be much happier at a table for one. Now back at home, a tear-stricken Jane reveals to Elizabeth that Charles has fled the state on some kind of a crazy expedition. And remember that letter from the publisher earlier? Well, Elizabeth arrives at a fancy restaurant to meet with DNG publishers, only to find out that Darcy is conducting the meeting. And he's the co-owner of the company. Darcy offers to publish the novel only if it is extensively edited, which she refuses. But before storming out of the restaurant, Elizabeth blames Darcy for ruining Jack's relationship with Anna, as well as Jane and Charles' relationship. Later that night, the Englishman sends Elizabeth an email, apologizing for his bluntness and revealing that Jack had eloped to Las Vegas with Anna and maxed out her credit cards to pay off his gambling debts. Darcy paid off the debt and Anna filed for a divorce, but it turned out that Jack was still legally married to another girl. Man, what a mess. Darcy further explains that Charles left on his own accord after seeing Collins propose to Jane. After spending some time sad and heartbroken, Elizabeth, she begins editing her novel and prepares to go on a London study abroad as a replacement teaching assistant for her professor. Left alone, Elizabeth falls asleep editing her novel and wakes up to an unanticipated thunderstorm. Unable to find her car, she enters a cabin that just so happens to belong to Darcy and Anna. Boy, what are the odds? They invite her inside for dinner and to help her get out of the rain. 
Darcy tells Miss Bennett that he is leaving for California the next day and invites her to dinner when he comes back. But Elizabeth tells him that she is leaving for London. Carolyn all of a sudden interrupts the conversation. Man, what a wet blanket. At least she gives Elizabeth a ride back to her car and informs our heroine that she and Darcy are engaged. Boy, I didn't see that one coming. Oh, the plot twists. Congratulations. Back at home, Kitty reveals that Lydia and Jack have secretly traveled to Las Vegas to elope. So most of the cast and half the crew rush to Sin City in order to stop them. After receiving a call from Charles, Darcy stops the ceremony at a Scottish-themed chapel. But after a physical altercation, Jack is arrested for gambling and bigamy. Man, Jack, he really sucks. It's just me and you. Got something new. But believing that Darcy is marrying Carolyn, Elizabeth leaves with her roommates. But Darcy, he follows after his true love. Elizabeth and Darcy, they share a kiss in the middle of the road. I can't let you go without asking if, uh, without knowing if, um, if you could love me. What about Caroline? We're not engaged. She's completely crazy. I'm in love with someone else. Now, who could have imagined that these two star-crossed lovebirds would end up with one another? To end this mediocre romantic comedy, the characters are shown in sequence in the future. Here, Lydia, she never marries, and she authors a self-help book. While Kitty becomes a professional cheerleader and later a high school cheerleading coach, she marries and has five daughters. Collins and Mary, they also tie the knot. And Carolyn marries a 75-year-old billionaire with a heart condition who lives for another 18 years and with whom she has three children. Jane and Charles, they marry, and his wealth allows them to retire comfortably in South America. What about Jack? Well, he escapes from prison and ends up in Brazil. Elizabeth goes to London and finishes her novel. Darcy visits her there and proposes to her, and of course she accepts. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm at mormonmoviereviews at gmail.com. Pride and Prejudice, a Latter-day Story, is distributed by XL Entertainment, and this is the director, Andrew Black's first movie. In an interview shortly before the film's release, the BYU graduate told Meridian Magazine that, I think that the main theme of the film is the same of the book which is the importance of looking past surface impressions and not making past judgments on people. As far as LDS aspects of the film, I felt it was important to say that it's okay to be a 26-year-old non-married woman. Hmm, good point. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Here's your Rotten Tomato score with very mediocre ratings. And Marty Mapes summarizes my sentiments pretty well when she wrote that Pride and Prejudice, a Latter-day Comedy, is a good old-fashioned movie with a pretty star, a good heart, and no cynicism. Here's your box office earnings of about $377,000. When I first watched this movie, I really thought that it lacked charm, but after re-watching it a couple of times to, uh, for this review, the movie actually grew on me. Fundamentally, I don't think that Elizabeth and Darcy, they have enough chemistry to really make the film work. And call me superficial, but I just need a more handsome Darcy. I know, I know that's bad, but romantic comedies, they have to be about people, and I'm just not into Orlando Seal. Thanks so much for joining me to review this film. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and join us next time for another episode of the Mormon Movie Reviews, where LDS movie lovers belong where we will review the restoration of the priesthood, 1982. So long.